I didn't realise that dressing like this would encourage dog friends. Hello friend, how are you doing? I hope this finds you well today. I always try and describe what I'm going to do if it's a not a traditional knitting episode. Um, but the title usually tells you all. If you haven't seen uh, past episode 51 of Critical Role, uh, I'm not going to do any spoilers apart from the fact that I'm going to be talking about a new character. So if you've already clicked this, you will have already had a spoiler, so I apologise, but I've tried to wait a little bit of time before sharing this. I finished this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was just so excited when Alex, who is my husband, if you're new here, was like, oh, a knitter, and I was like, yeah. So we've got a knitter joining Campaign 3 of Critical Role, which makes me very happy. She is a cleric, she's called Diana, and she is played by Abria Iyengar, who is just... Um, and when she first said she was playing Anita, I immediately lost my mind a little bit. Um, Audrey? Is it now the time that you need to go out even though you've just come back in? Really? What's up? Okay, hopefully we can get back to where we were. So, Deanna joined the campaign and turns out she is... I'm not going to go into anything else actually, right? Let's leave it at that, just in case you're not up to date but you already know that Abria's joined the group. So straight away I acknowledged that she is actually wearing knitwear and I pointed this out to Alex and he was like, well, wh why don't you just knit that? And I was like, oh. Can I? And this was a Saturday morning, I think like two days after the the live th video went out, and I was like, okay, yeah, okay. And I rummaged around in my wool pantry and I knew that I wouldn't have yarn thick enough to knit it exactly like she has got it in the uh, cover character art, which is designed by Hannah Friedrichs, who is a Ganthan's guide, I think, on Instagram does the most beautiful artwork um, and I really have to say I really loved that as a knitter Hannah has done both the knit side and the pearl side visually. Um, I was not going to match that because I knew from the start I did not have enough yarn to do it big enough and also this is a kind of silly project. I think what I will do is I'll show you the item that I did end up making um, but I think I'm going to turn this into a cushion for Audrey. Uh, I will probably unpick it, but this is fine. This is just a fun project, and if I end up finding a, an excuse to wear it again, then I won't. But I, I had intended for this to be unpicked or just sewn up so that little Audrey has a cushion to sit on, because she did keep sitting on it as I was making it. She's a spoiled little cat. So all I did when I was thinking about this was I tried my best to use what yarn I had to make the colour as close as I could. Uh, so then once I had... So to test it, I just grabbed a load of yarns and wrapped it around the knitting needle to kind of get an idea of how the colours were going to mesh before doing a little gauge swatch. And I did do a gauge swatch. It is knitted into this because I really did use every inch of the chunkiest yarn that I had. I don't tend to knit with very thick yarn. It's not really... I don't know, it's just not my thing. Um, so I used every last bit that I had and knitted up a gauge swatch. I, I was really happy with the colour and how it matches the, the the artwork. It isn't, it's not exact, it was never going to be. And for the shape, what I ended up doing was, um, I had to do quite a big gauge swatch so that I knew that I wasn't messing up because it's such big stitches. And I cast on I'm sure I wrote it down. Maybe not in here. So I think maybe I put notes on my computer. That's the sort of thing I do. I use multiple places. Yeah. So depending on where I am, I will use different things to note down what I'm doing. And I think that's kind of normal, but it does make searching for stuff to share kind of chaos. So I should probably get a bit better at that. Noted. Um, but I cast on enough stitches that it hung 
a little bit wider than my shoulders so that it could fall forward a little bit and backwards a little bit. Um, and then I knitted down, increasing just a little bit. Again, I was playing yarn chicken, so I was increasing as few amounts as I could while still getting a little bit of a flare. I then did a... I cast on one extra stitch and then I did a knit one, knit two together through the back loop bind off. So sort of an eye cord, but not quite. Um, again, worried about running out of yarn, so I didn't go for a full butt full, full eye cord that I kind of would have liked to, but I do think this reads better as the pattern because the stitches go this way, not this way, and again, this was purely to do with playing yarn chicken, otherwise I would have gone straight into doing it as mo more accurately as I could. Um, but this is quite fun, I really like the way it sits. Um, uh, it does hang forward as we want it to, we can, we can readjust it and things, but it's actually quite cosy. Um, I have used it a couple of evenings um, when I haven't thought to go upstairs to get myself more layers and the blankets just aren't cutting it. Um, so I'm quite happy with this first piece. If I was so inclined, I would be, would like to knit a version of this in a darker colour with a hood attached. So start it a little bit thinner and narrower at the collar, bring it in slightly and do a hood and maybe a little drawstring closure. I think that would be really cute and quite practical. That was the start and because Alex has said that I was like, okay so I can do this and I have a video to share with you coming out soon hopefully uh, where I got to have a little chat with the lovely makers over at Nettles and Critters, Claudia and Greta and I thought it's extra, it was on a Sunday, I wasn't playing D&D, I may as well just aim to have a casual cosplay done for then. I did go a little bit further. I looked at the, alb the album art. I keep saying album art in my head. Um, it's not the character art. And I noticed that she's wearing a, a green long sleeve top. And I was like, wow, I've had this green long sleeve top since uh, I was living at home with my parents the, for the very first time. So I've had this from when I was maybe 16. Um, it's it's a child's large <laughs> uh, age, no it's not, it's well, it's a UK age 11 to 12. Um, I've had this for literal decades and I was like, oh, it's kind of the perfect color. So I'm part of the way there already. I did think about maybe, and I might do some pictures with this one because it is it's one of my favourite items I've ever knitted still, even though it really doesn't particularly go with my, my hair at the moment. This is the Elf Mail by Danny Meager, and I think it is gold enough and it is green enough that even though if it's not the most accurate, I think it's almost cooler than just the plain green, but depends on if you're trying to match more. This combination of yarns is still one of my favourites. It was is yarn that I hand dyed. The gold is something that I can replicate, I just haven't for quite a while. It was called Sunshine Type. She's inspired by a band called Turnover and quite a lovely song called Sunshine Type. And the background yarn is actually a nod to Ford in Campaign 2 A Critical Role. Uh, but I didn't note down how I did this and I really hope that Adaya comes out with a colour as close as you can get, colourway as close as you can get to it so that more items like this can be made. Um, but that was just, that was just the base layers. I'm like, okay, I've already got those bits. I've got a brown belt. This was actually my dad's. Again, I think he said he had this before he was like, he was like 10, 12 years old or something. I've worn this for absolutely years. And whilst it's not the most accurate, perfect. So I was like, okay, I've got quite a lot. I can wear my Doc Martens. And whilst I was going to make some little um, leg warmers. Maybe I'll do that today. Maybe I'll whip them up quickly. Just like a little leg warmer layer to go around the cuff of my Dr. Martins or some of my longer boots. And in terms of trousers, I have 
some grey trousers that I could wear. I've got a multitude of trousers that would just be fine. They wouldn't be 100% accurate. But the fun bit was doing some more knitting. And I remembered I have these gorgeous yarns from La Bienname. This one is called... Well, they're both called Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> um, Alex bought these for me years ago. Um, I think my maybe my 31st no 30th birthday and I've put these into like four projects and ripped them out I've actually got a hat and a shawl that I need to finish unripping and none of the projects were just right like it just wasn't right so I'm like okay this is maybe a, a really extra use of this yarn but I can't wait to show you the finished item I started off by making a collar and I'm still not 100% sure. What I ended up doing was a gauge swatch and then noting what, I, what gauge I got down and doing some measurement around my neck to see what I could do. Now, I haven't sewn or made patterns like that in years. Um, I used to used to make ice skating dresses and things in school, um, backpacks for my little emo bands that I loved. So I, I was quite good at sewing growing up, but definitely drifted. Um, and I feel like this was m this part was more like a sewing pattern in the way I m mentally did it because I just couldn't quite get it. It's quite hard <laughs> to get that much shaping without having something to like work onto. Like I feel like it would have almost been a better idea to create a knitted amount of knitted fabric um, and drape it onto ideally a mannequin and then sew it up. But then that defeats the point of making the fabric kind of. So I went and did as best as I could. And I ended up drawing up a little a little idea of what I might do and this is the final one that I actually went and did so I so I actually knitted a once I did a little swatch just to get an idea of gauge I did a basically a draft a mock-up sample while I was filming my little uh, druid in the in, in the fey forest kind of vibe video and I actually finished everything that I wanted to do in that video. So it took me an hour, which isn't that long to, to try something out. And then when I saw how that fitted, I ended up coming back to my paper and noting down the few changes I wanted to make and casting on properly, knowing exactly what I was doing uh, to the best of my <laughs> knowledge. I still don't know exactly what I'm doing. I started at the bottom of the collar, knitted up and decreased as I went. So decreased on the end and throughout the center to bring it in, not just at the edges. I then did a little bit of short row shaping just to lift the, the bulk of the collar higher to give a bit more of a curved edge that didn't quite come out as good, but that's because I ended up before I closed the fabric, I ended up putting some interfacing in it because that was an idea I had from the start, just to make it more solid. However, that has made me maybe affected the way, I mean, it's still super drapey as you can see, just not in this direction, which is the way we didn't want it to just collapse. So here it is, I ended up So once I'd got to the short row shaping, I ended up knitting three extra rows and then repeating the process, only this time increasing so that it get, got bigger again. Then I put in the interfacing and I knitted the two sides together. So basically making a giant welt, if you've ever done that process in knitting, all, all I do is, um, or all you do, we do, we do do. Uh, is pick up a pearl bump from the row that you want to join it to 
and knit them like one stitch. Amazing. So easy um, and so many cool techniques you can create with that. And then I just did a, a, a big eye coil bind off uh, across the bottom. I tend to do it, I think I did wrong side facing out. I just think it looks nicer. I ended up adding a hook and eye. Not the neatest job I've ever done, but I wanted this to be separate so that when I made the armor piece, it could be taken off because I was quite sure that whilst this is fun, it kind of wouldn't have been right. We have another little kitten interruption. I'm just gonna grab the kitten. Where have you been? You don't wanna be in the sun anymore. Can you tell anyone where you've been? Where have you been? Hmm? Um, so I, w I, I wasn't convinced that I would get this good enough that I would want it to be permanently on the item. Um, and if I did decide that, I could simply pick up stitches from this and make it seamless. But I'm glad I did it this way because I wanted this to be so small that it wouldn't have slipped over my head. I mean, I could wear it as a little crown. Uh, yeah, it just would not have gone over my head. So there was quite a few factors in making this separately and I'm glad I did. Kind of interesting to play with, maybe something that I might look again to do in the future, but something very different. And then finally, I say finally, penultimately, is that second to last? I ended up knowing, I, I now know quite thoroughly what, roughly what stitches I get per inch for knitting mohair. However, this is a slightly thinner one. I think you get 500 meters per 50 grams, which is really quite cool with a Labianime skein, or at least you did back then. So I did a little swatch using my biggest needles, my 10 mil ones. And again, that was because I was worried about running out of yarn, but as you can see, that was not a thing I needed to worry about at all, which really surprised me. I ended up getting, what did I get? I have not put my gauge here. Uh, instead, what I've got is my measurements and my stitch count. If you wanna make this, I guess you can. You can try it yourself. So I ended up casting 40 stitches across for the back and then knitting down to where the underarm would be. Um, uh, that was six, uh, seven inches. Just, I'll just read it out. So 40 stitches across and then knitted down for seven inches flat. And then I picked up 10 stitches for each shoulder and I knitted those separately, increasing slightly and picking up, uh, casting on 16 stitches in the center. So I only did two increased rows either side and then a backwards loop cast on 16 extra stitches and again knitted down seven inches to the underarm. Then I join it in the round and then increasing two times just below my waist because I just wanted it to be a little bit more loosey goosey over the hips. So I think I did two or three rounds of increasing two stitches either side. So I increased to 88 stitches so that's two, two increase rounds about, I would say it was about here. And I will, I will put this on screen or pop it onto my Kofi so you can see it permanently. 
and then all I did was divided the bottom section into four. So instead of the divide sitting directly in the center, I shifted everything around so that the divide sat kind of a quarter in front, quarter to the sides, and then quarter in the back. I wasn't going to divide for the back, but I actually spoke it out with Alex and I was like, I think it would look cooler. I don't know if that's more historical or not. I, I wasn't fussed about it. I just thought it would actually look a bit cooler if I did it that way. So I ended up doing that. Yeah, so that was super simple. I had 88 stitches. I divided it by four. I got 22 stitches and I knew that my beginning of the round was at the underarm. So all I needed to do was knit 11 stitches and then start. And all I did was knit. So from there, I knit the 11 stitches. I put all of those other stitches on hold um, and then knitted 22 stitches back and forth until I was happy with the depth, bound them off. The next 22 stitches, knitted them down, bound them off, re repeated around. And that really only took like two days of, or two evenings of knitting. It really didn't take very long at all. And then I just finished it all with some I-cord and I'm really happy that I did and how good I think it looks. I used the Merino singles for that. And I've spoken about this at great le length. I love mohair, it is one of my favorites. Merino singles don't really have a place in my heart. I love yak singles and I think yak and silk add strength generally to the merino and this one's I mean this is lasting amazingly considering whereas a merino single generally I've it looks nice but for me personally and my want to wear things and use them and you know uh, it doesn't generally hold up but I love it. I'm so happy. I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, I'll try and get some photos and footage to put in of me wearing this kind of normally because I actually, well, I was wearing it with tartan trousers when I first tried it on and I thought it was really quite cool. I just need to find the right top to put under it because the top I was wearing at the time was a black top and it looked, didn't quite look right. Love it. I have hung it up only because I had a, I'd blocked it beautifully and then folded it, and I just wanted it to. I've steamed it a little bit, and I'll take it off afterwards. It's just a lot easier to show you too. Sorry, I'm waiting because it's just so. Oh, and then I added a little bit of ribbing at the top just to finish it. It's like elven chainmail, but it's whimsy and it's also kind of like, I don't know, slightly cyber gothy? I don't know. And slightly high fashion-y? I don't know. I just, honestly, I think this is one of my favourite pieces that I've knitted. And I would be really inclined to knit a black version with a kind of silky silver, silver, like gunmetal black edging. And I really want to do that. I'm just not in a position 
could check how much mohair I've got. I'm not in a position to be buying yarn. Um, so yeah, this piece, oh, I couldn't be more happy. I, I just couldn't, I don't think. I'll put this aside and stop going on about it, but 11 out of 10, love this thing. And if it's useful, I might just do a, like I did with the, my little rebel dress pattern. I might not make a pattern for it. I might just put up a, like a free recipe PDF that you can donate to if you want to, that kind of vibe again, because I think it's easy enough for you to customize and to do it to your own measurements, if that's something that you wanted, because I think it's very cool. Anyway, final thing that I wanted to make sure I made just because I feel like it would really add was the little amulet type thing that sat at the front. I couldn't, it's not clear enough to see exactly what it was, but I decided to make a necklace that I'm going to end up painting the other side so that I can use it for another project in the future. So this is cool because it's a double whammy, but Deanna wears a little Dawnfather amulet breastplate attachment. So I ended up going to the Dawnfather page on Wiki uh, and I found in my pyrography, I always say that weirdly, pyrography craft kit that I've bought because I did some signs for Lovely Windy Hollow Farm. One of the best places on earth. It really is. Uh, so that I've, I purchased this with that in mind and it came with what I think are coasters. It ended up taking the coaster, drawing on the symbol of the Dawnfather as best I could. I now own a compass and I kind of wish I did at this point. I could have fudged it without a compass, but well, I did fudge it without a compass, but you know, I, I could fudge that without a compass, but it's something that I really wanted to have in my tools. So it's something that I, I lashed out on recently. And then I used my little burner to draw on the design and then use some acrylic just to paint it. I was thinking about going over it with a, a coat of PVA or something to make it a little bit shiny, but I'm quite a matte person. I don't think I'm a very shiny person, so I didn't. And then I took to my Dremel and drilled two little holes and added some gold chain which I have ingeniously held on there using two six mil jump rings that's it and then added my little bar and hoop so that I can do it up uh, the idea being it's very easy to remove these jump rings and I could turn it around so even though I did practice the green on the back I will probably I have a couple of characters that I would love to create so I could just open the jump rings, turn it around and reuse it, which I think is quite handy.
It sits about the right height, it it works. So that's the quick bit of making that I did for this. It really didn't take very long and like I said, I'm so, so happy with this piece. <sighs> that, I'm really glad that I, I took the leap. I was like, no, no one wants to see this anymore. We're all done with silly, casual cosplay but actually I'm not done I don't think I really am enjoying trying to knit in a very different way to what I had been and trying a little tidbits of new techniques as I go and I think I'm just gonna quickly go and whip up some leg warmer type things to go over my docks I think that's a good idea and then after the postman's been for Alex I'm going to take myself, I think, to the woods and do my best to get some footage of the whole thing together because the garden just isn't working, the living room isn't working. So I'm going to make a plonker of myself and enjoy every second. <laughs> I'll go and get some fabric to see if we can make these leg warmer things. The temptation to do a Sam Regal and put something funny on the bottom of here was really high, but I couldn't find the googly eyes.
they really didn't take very long and yeah this edge is not refined but i'm gonna tuck it in and hide it so i think having the extra length is gonna make a difference i am going to tidy up the mess that i've just created and wait for the delivery man and then i'm gonna get myself to the woods and hopefully share with you a fun little a little Deanna cosplay vibe. So, this was a fun experience, to be honest. I have taken myself to the woods, as you will have seen, and I've made friends with some doggos. I didn't realise that dressing like this would encourage dog friends, but that is one of the best side effects of wearing anything I've ever experienced. Um, overall, I'm pleased. I know this is a bit janky, but actually for knitting and having your arms free it's quite nice um, i'm definitely getting almost too warm in this which again is quite a bonus i would say uh it is actually a really nice day this is the first day of full sunshine that i've kind of been able to experience a bit of in what seems like the whole of winter uh, i definitely feel like spring is springing so that's nice i'm actually surrounded by some bluebells I will show you this kind of styled how I would wear it day to day, um, which is something that I'm going to do. I know that it's going to get caught on loads of things, it definitely got caught on a few brambles and things, but I still love it, I'm still going to wear it, um, I'm really pleased with the outcome. I forgot to pack the collar though and in my sort of dash to get to the woods today and embrace the sunshine while I could, I am a bit sad that I forgot it, but I, I'm glad that I remembered everything else. The necklace is fun, it is chunky, but it definitely is bold. And the little leg warmer things have been great, like they've done the job for a 10 minute make, 15 minute make, I'm quite impressed. I know this isn't the content that people came here for originally, but if you're here and you're enjoying it, it's really quite cool. Um, I have a lot of fun and doing sort of whimsical fantasy inspired items that I can wear daily is just good and I think that's the energy that a lot of us feel like we kind of would like to add to our lives a little bit of magic in a concrete jungle if you will <laughs> I am so pleased that we've got a knitter in a live play actual play Dungeons and Dragons campaign that really warms my heart 
um, and the fact that it's such a big part of her character and it's just it's beautiful i've been here for it i liked the little nods we had in campaign two so having an npc that is really quite into knitting is cool and the fact that hannah went to the detail of adding that knit and pearl stitch in the character art just kind of reminds me and shows me that they're, they're paying attention you know some films an art really misses misses that in knitting like it's quite cool i just I think it's worth acknowledging how much detail went into it. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I will get home, put on some normal outfit. It outfit outfits. Who knows? We'll see. Um, and put them at the end. But otherwise, I'm so glad that you were here and you came on this little adventure with me. I hope that you are doing well, and I hope that your loved ones are doing well. I hope that you give them big squishes, and I hope you look after yourselves. And um, yeah, I just love you. Don't forget to love each other.